On to East Africa now. Kenya's government is looking to have at least 250 megawatts worth of grid tied battery storage in place in 2024. But there's just one little problem. The regulations to govern the operations of these massive power packs and the prices at which power will be sold into and out of them, they're not out yet. In effect, that's keeping investors and the capital on the sidelines. Now, the government aims to progressively increase storage capacity tied to the grid from around 250 megawatts in 2024 up to nearly 500 megawatts by 2036. And even taking high financing costs, as is often the case in African utilities, into account, the energy regulator here says that battery storage, quote, may compete with power from thermal power stations, since these facilities will do more than just store carbon-free energy at an estimated cost of about two US cents per kilowatt hour. Kenya, remember, had about 650 megawatts of thermal capacity by the end of last year. Now, with nearly 90% of electricity generated in the country coming from renewable sources at the end of 2022, the business case for battery storage is fairly strong. By the end of that year, the most variable sources, uh, solar and wind, collectively made up just under 20% of the country's generation capacity. Now, with more solar and wind capacity on the way, the country, in fact, will need even more storage to manage that flow of energy. Ahead of the Africa Energy Forum next week, I spoke to Edwin Barrow. He's a partner at Bowman's Law in Kenya. I started our conversation by exploring what investor interest in this sector is like. Battery storage does two things. It acts like your, your power bank. You, all of us have a power bank where in case your battery is low on your phone, you just plug it in. It also acts as a balancer of frequency and voltage. Now, how you then fit that into a grid depends on, its, on the specific scenario you're trying to address. So if it's to act as a power bank, it could be next to your generator. So if I have a wind farm, there's a generator next to it. When the wind is high but power demand is low, I charge my batteries, then discharge during times of greater, of greater demand. Or it could be placed on the utility side for the frequency regulation and voltage support. So it, it, it depends on the use case. Is, is there demand though in, in our market for battery storage is there interest rather among utilities who are saying well if i'm going to invest you know i'm going to go to epra or kplc and try and negotiate a power purchase agreement mm -hmm. over 10 15 years yeah. then as part of that i'd like to have battery storage as part of the investment is, are you seeing that sort of interest coming up yes uh, especially now with the challenges we've had around uh, the cost of power some of the sweetener that uh, these generators are offering to kplc and to Airprice saying listen I'll, I'll, I'll put up this wind farm or I'll put up this solar plant um, and on top of that then I can put battery generation or battery storage next to it which then deals with the issue of um, what is commonly known as the duck curve. I don't know if you've heard of that yeah. phrase. And then it also takes care of um, the frequency regulation on behalf of KPLC or Ketraco in this case. So the interest is there but there are a couple of issues that have to be dealt with before we get to a point where we have a shovel in the ground for a battery storage plant. What, what are those issues? So from a regulatory standpoint, and again, this is not an issue just in Kenya, you, you asked me the question, are they generators, are they distributors? That needs to be resolved. You need to have a clear regulatory path for investors to see how they'll implement this project. That's one. Because yeah. it's not just a case of me saying, I'll put money into a solar power plant yes. with batteries, yes. and yet the price at which I can actually sell power into the grid is essentially going to be, you know, because we're moving towards this auction structure, right, for selling correct, electricity, correct, correct. which essentially by definition means we're going to try and push the price of power as low as exactly. possible, which might not make that battery investment viable. Exactly. So, so that's the second point. We need clear tariff structures that incentivize people to invest in this technology because the benefits are there. If we are trying to move to a green grid, then you need storage. So we need a tariff structure. We have the feed-in tariff for small plants, biomass, um, hydro, small hydros. We have the renewable energy auction policy that you just mentioned for wind and solar. We don't have anything for battery. 
Okay, but looking at the, the wider plans, the, the least cost power development plan, for example, yeah. uh, the target was what, I believe 250 megawatts of storage by 2024, and then that slowly ramps up to nearly 500 megawatts by the mid 2030s. And they speak about that at least three times yes. in the latest iteration of the LCPDP, but yeah. it's a little bizarre. On one hand, we're talking about storage, but the <laughs> rules around that simply aren't there. So how do we resolve that regulatory uncertainty? We, we, we need to find a solution to that. At the moment, um, if you look at, we got the Energy Act 2019, um, which requires a couple of regulations to make sure it comes into force. So there are a lot of regulations that are sitting at the regulator's desk. We understand they are ready, but I think their energies are focused elsewhere at the moment. We have the issue around fuel prices, um, um, the current PPA task force and the effect that has had on the market as, 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 and the sector as a general. So that needs to sort of quiet down so that the regulator can focus on doing its job, which is moving the market forward. And, and I know this is a, it's a simple question, but with a complicated answer, but at what price does it make sense for these renewable generators, your solar, your wind power plants, to then also invest in that battery storage at grid scale? I would say it's at the point where it becomes cheaper than the alternatives, right? The alternatives in this case are your thermal plants. And the moment then it becomes cheaper to invest in a battery storage facility, and then you can recover the cost of that and make a margin that is lower than what we are paying for the thermal plants, then I think that will be the inflection point. So ideally, would you be targeting, what, less than 10 US cents a kilowatt hour? Um, I'm not sure about <laughs> that, but when that happens, you'll see the market shift immediately.